If it is null, by any chance, if the value is null, then it will return an empty option. What is the use of this? The million dollar question is, how do we prevent the null pointer exception? So, what happens is now, when you return optional from an API that you're calling, which was earlier returning, a, let's say, a string, now because you are returning optional, you are explicitly, you as a caller of that method, you have to explicitly handle it. Hi everyone, welcome to my channel Code with Ease by Varsha. So we have been doing a playlist on four Java interview questions. Among these, couple of among that, couple of videos have really taken off and gained a lot of traction and love and support from you guys. So thank you so much. One of them being the Java 8 streams, part one, and also the part two, the Java 8 comparators. So continuing with the series of Java 8 API improvements, we are going to talk about optionals today along with the code demo. This have come in along with Java 8. The biggest reason why we love optional is how it makes handling of null pointer exception is so easy. So there's a readme as we can see on the screen where I've tried to document all the important, all the important things that you need to know about optional, right? So you can give this a quick read. Uh, the link to this will be available in the description. So what is optional like a container object that may or may not contain a non-null value? And then why do we need optional? Like I said, handling of null pointers was a little cumbersome before. We didn't know whether the absent, if the value is not absent or if it is absent, how do we deal with it, right? So uh, this was the scenario before optional, right? What are the problems that optional is trying to solve apart from null pointer safety? And the basic methods, so this is what we will focus on today, the methods, the APIs of the optional, where to use which one. We'll do a code demo of that. So this uh, readme is going to be a quick refresher for those of you uh, who are not aware of uh, optional. And give it a quick read and then continue watching the video. So into the idea, let's dive right in by writing the code for creating optional first with a non-null value. Why am I saying with a non-null value? We'll come to that in a bit. So firstly, this is the optional class, right? And it takes in the generic parameters. So let's say I'll take it type string and I'll give some variable name. So this is how you first read optional dot off. There are two variations, one off nullable and then off. So if I give off, let's say I just give here Varsha over here and I'll try to print this out. Now quickly, I'll also take you into this optional class just to see how it looks like public final class optional. Uh, since 1.8, it came in with Java 8. And these are all the different bunch of methods. If I talk about the off method, it returns an optional describing the given non-null value. So whatever value you're giving, that is supposed to be the non-null value. It must be non-null. So it is written over here, the value which must be non-null. But if the value comes out to be null, it can throw null pointer exception, right? But if at all you want to, you know, if you're not sure, right, if it is going to be a null or it is a non-null value, so then you can use off nullable because it returns an optional. If it is non-null, it will return it as it is like whatever the given value you're giving. But if it is null, by any chance, if the value is null, then it will return an empty option, right? So firstly, I'll try to print this out. We'll go step by step. So like we said, it like, it's like a container, which is containing this value of Varsha. But if I want to get the actual value, I have to do dot get, which is going to return the value for me. So now if I run this, I'll be able to get the actual value. So this is how we create an optional and this is how we fetch or retrieve a value from an optional container. Now the next thing is how do we create an empty optional, right? So what does an empty optional mean? We'll come to that. So see, let's create one. So optional empty. We will just simply do optional dot md, right? That's it. Oops. So if I go into this, here it says that it returns an empty optional object which represents no value. So if at all you want to represent there is no value in that, you will try to create an empty optional. Also, one more thing is, uh, if you remember when we talked about off nullable, right? So if you are not sure, suppose by mistake or somehow your value has turned out to be null, then it is also going to return an empty optional where in the downstream, you can just check whether the optional is empty and handle it accordingly. So that is how it helps you when you have optional dot empty handy with you. So what happens when we print this out optional empty? Let's run this. So I'll just get this. Can we do something from it? Can we do a get out of it? Let's see. No, it will give us no such element present. So what we should actually do is we should use a is present check. Okay, so we'll go into that later. Uh, 
Now, what, next thing what we'll do is we'll create an optional with a potentially null value. So just copy this and I'll just say optional with null value. And here we are going to use optional dot off of nullable. Okay, so let's say I give null over here and I'll try to print this out optional with null value. So So what happens? We get optional dot empty. So like we have seen already, if you give null, you're going to get optional dot empty. Or if you give a valid value over here, then we should be able to get the actual value or the actual container with the value, right? So this is how we have been able to see three different ways to create an option. One with a null value, one with a non-null value, and one is optional, I mean empty optional, right? Next is how do we check if optional contains a value? Okay, so a simple check is you just do, let's say I'll do with this one optional with null value dot is present if it returns a bool. So if it is present, we are going to print this out that yes, optional value exists. And maybe you can also try to get the value out of it. So you're going to say optional with uh, null value dot get. Else, does it exist? Optional does not exist. So if I run this, so when I did this option with non value because I and now at the same time, if I again restore it back to null and if I run this again, I should be getting it is not present. It doesn't exist, right? Because when we give it null, it returns an empty option. So we have seen how do we check for a value. Now, let's say the option is empty and you want to give a default value to it. That if it is empty, I want to return or supply this particular default value. So how do we do this? Okay. So now I want to give a default value. Okay. So what I'll do? I'll do optional value, option with none value. Then I'll do or else. So as the name suggests, if it is null, then what will be the else condition? In that, I will say return this default value to me. So I can return this like optional OPT with default. Okay, it should be a string because we are returning something out of it, right? And I'll just print this out OPT with default. And I'll run this. So I got default value because the optional with null value over here that we have, it is not. Now let's say I again put it back to Varsha. I'll just give my full name this time. So if I give Varsha, then the or else part should not get computed, right? So we got Varsha Das in this case. So if you're giving a default value, it will run only if it is empty. I mean, if the optional is empty or it is having a null value, then it will run the or else part. Next is default value supplier. So it is something similar. Only thing is over here. Here, what we'll do, we'll use or else get, which takes in a supplier. As in, you'll do some computation and write a lambda function. And over here, you can do some computation to get the default value. Similar to this, similar to this, but the only difference is in or else, right? You can give what the other value can return. But if you see over here, the supplier, you can give some function, some computation that can produce a value that needs to be returned in the else condition, in the else in the else case. So if the value is present, it will return. Otherwise, it will return the result produced by the supplying function. So that is also available to us. So something like this, and we can just do this out. We can print this default value to the default supplier. We again got Parshadas. Okay, let me change it back to null. So we got the default value. We can just give with supplier to just differentiate between the longs, between the sysouts. Right. So, so far, we have seen that instead of us writing an if-else, that if it is present, if it is not present, handle this, we can just do it in one single line by using the or else or the or else get. Now let's say I want to throw an exception if the optional is empty. How do I do this? 
So again, I'll take this optional with null value. Here we have a method called or else throw. There are two ways. One, it will just throw, right? It will just throw like this simply or else throw. Uh, throw what? The no such element exception, right? This is the exception class which is already defined. If it is not, it will directly throw no such element exception, which actually happened when we uh, also tried to do the get on the empty option. Or what you can also do is you can give a supplier to this. So if I go into the next one, take this optional with null value and then I'll do or else throw. So if I take a supplier, I can do this lambda function and I can give a custom exception, right? I can give you a custom exception class. As of now, I'm giving runtime exception. Now, since it's going to throw the exception, we have to enclose it within a try catch block. So I'll enclose this within a try catch. And I'll just catch the exception over here. Exception not good. And I'll just get the object also. So two things I'll show one is using this and also without the supplier. So if I run this, let's see what happens. So we get exception awkward. This is the runtime exception. This is the object. Now let's say I don't give the supplier. And if I just give this, we should ideally be getting the no such element exception over here. Yeah, so we are getting this, right? So now that we have understood how to create optional, how to check if the optional contains a value and returning a default value. But what is the use of this? The million dollar question is, how do we prevent the null pointer exception? So what happens is now when you return optional from an API that you're calling, which was earlier returning a, let's say a string. Now, because you are returning optional, you are explicitly, you as a caller of that method, you have to explicitly handle it, which means now, you know, if it is returning optional, you do not know whether it is going to return a null value or not. It may or may not contain a null value. So you have to handle it accordingly. Maybe you have to do some is present check. Maybe if it is present, great. If it is not present, you may have to return a default value or you may want to throw some exception there are a bunch of different things that you can do right so this is how using an optional you become conscious or you become wary of the fact that you have to handle because that container or that return type may contain a value or may not contain a value so this is how you are actually doing a forced null check when you return optional from an api that you are calling and of course this is how null pointer exceptions are prevented now moving on to the next part how do we filter and map operations so you have let's say some optional of integer okay of int and let's say optional dot of maybe 50. now i want to filter it out okay so uh, i can just say that optional of integer again and i'll just say some kind of filtering i want to do so i can say opt dot filter so as we have already seen the filter functions that uh, let's say is the value is the value maybe greater than 10 okay or whatever logic i mean just i'm just trying to show you the flow so just trying to show you that we took an optional we had to filter it now i also want to map it so let's say i want to map it to a string so i'll take an optional of string the same thing i'm just going to do like the one which i filtered i'm just going to map it and i'm just going to say that objects dot to string okay so this is how I'm doing, trying to do the filtering and mapping. And finally, I just want to print this uh, opt string. Also, I can do that. If I get this as empty, then I can do it. Or else, I can just give some default map value. So this is how we can do filtering and map operations. Let me try to run this. We are getting 50 over here which is now coming in the form of string. So let's say I change the condition is the value less than 10. So in that case, that condition was not filtered. I mean, the filter condition turned, this predicate turned out to be false, which is why we are getting into this or else block, right? We are getting the default map value. Now, moving on to the next example, we are now towards the end of this video. We want to chain methods on optional. How do we do this? Now, in the previous example, we did all these steps separately right but i don't want to do it separately so i just want to chain it so what i'll do i'll call optional dot sorry just say optional dot off and then i'll say 40 then i'll just say dot uh, maybe map it let me take a string rather so that we can do some creative operations and i'll map it and i'm just going to say that given this particular string let me add uh just concat it 
still just to concat with world hello world right and then i'll just try to do some filtering maybe uh, is the length of the string maybe greater than five if it is then i'm just going to greater than five and then i'll just say or maybe or else uh, some default string so if it doesn't meet the condition so just trying to show you how we can chain different operations right and we can also try to store this chained output right and i'll try to print this now so let's try to run this so we got hello world and this filter condition turned out to be true so let me just tweak this uh, a little bit let's say i want to say is the length greater than 15 which is going to turn out to be false and in that case the or else should be running so we get default string in this case right so we learned about adding adding this different uh, intermediate operations to optional uh, both in se different steps and also by chaining it finally we are going to do the transformation of an this is actually very simple we just do optional dot off right so we'll just say some string over here and once you do this you will be able to stream it and then you'll be able to forage and maybe you will be able to um, system dot out just print it out so this is how using optional you can transform it into a stream also so if i try to print this out i should be able to get the output from this which i got by doing a stream so basically you get optional you try to stream it after streaming you can do some intermediate operation like we usually do with streams and then you try to do some terminal operation collect for each whatever and uh, try to uh, just wrap it up so these were the 10 different uh, code examples one more thing i think i just missed out maybe i can use uh, just to show you there is another method called if present. So we checked there is something called is present, which was returning a boolean. Uh, it is going to check if it is present. If present, what it does, if I go into this, it is going to check if the value is present, it will do some action. Otherwise, it will not do anything. So if it is present, so I can use that null one. So if it is present, it is going to do something. Okay. So let's say I'll say uh, if it is present, then just print it out. Okay, so if it is present, just print this out. Hey, optional is present. Now, if I try to run this, ideally, because it is empty, so, so because it was null, after this particular sum string, we are not able to see anything. So if I change it to some valid optional, which actually contains some value, then we will be able to see this consumer, that hey, optional is present. So I think pretty much we have covered most of the important APIs methods as part of the optional class. And I hope this is going to give you a good head start uh, into using optionals. So thank you so much for watching today's video. Hope you guys have got value out of it uh, of how to use optional in day-to-day -day, uh, coding problems. And uh, uh, do like and share this particular video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Thank you so much for watching.